Look at that glare. Sexy. This is the end of a one-man, probably, uh, bucking saw. It might have been a cross cut, but I think it was a bucking saw. And it got cut up for some reason for a, a uh, Halloween costume. So I thought this was a nice size and shape. And we're going to turn it into a Shea size saw. And now I got it in some electrolysis. Though it's, it's not working very well. But give it time. We got some electrolysis going on. I want to get it nice and clean. Then we'll try and sharpen it. I've seen how to do it. I've never done it before. Here's my handle blank. I think it might have been a cutting board. It's hard though. So what I did is I started by tracing out a handle that fit his hand. And then I sort of freehanded it to be a little beefier. And we should... Should correlate right there. What I need to do now is get the slot for the blade and I think it'd be easiest to cut that on the table saw. So of course I did that. So now I gotta find something saw wise that I own that will allow me to cut that slot in there. I don't know what I've got yet. But I'm hoping to do it on the table saw, and that way allow me to set the depth that I want and um, get it nice and square. And then once I've got that, I'll cut it out. Looks like I don't have to get too crazy after all. That, with the kerf, appears to be dang near perfect. And yeah, there you can kind of see the pattern. So I'm just going to flush it out here. I wish I had a narrower bandsaw blade, but I guess what I got. I don't have any little ones. We've broken them. I have this and a big one. So It's brand new, however, so it should cut real nice. <laughs> you weren't even pointed at the saw. That's, yeah. a, that's okay. They got the gist of it. There's our little a duck missing its middle toe, but that is gonna be our our handle. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It's tough though. Inside, I'm going to use a big Forstner bit. Should be just right for a young hand. Yeah, it's pretty strong stuff. That's why I wanted to use it. Yep. And just like that, the handle's done. I know I skipped filming some steps, but it was just. I drilled some holes and I did a whole bunch of sanding. It's not like you're confused as to what I did. This little mark might confuse you. Um, unbeknownst to me, my helper grabbed it and he was going to chop out the handle holes. Had to put a stop to that uh, and, and drilled them. So four holes, four fingers. For a little boy's hands. I thinned it up, heading out towards this end, sanded everything out to 320. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's not perfect. It's a toy. A serious toy. So, the next step is to clean this up. I don't have the tools to flatten and align all the teeth. I actually do ironically have a set that would work on this saw. Somewhere I have two, but uh, 
don't believe we're really going to worry about that. I'm just going to clamp it in the drill press vise, get me a nice small flat file, and we're just going to touch them up so that they're sharp. Then, like an Attenborough narrated safari show, we are going to mate these together until we make the world's craziest and arguably most useless hand beam saw capable of viciously cutting anything small enough to fit in those cuts. But who cares? It's going to make somebody smile. And that's good enough for me. And I have another blade. I have a blade that some students of mine, after I taught the unit on Montana logging, found way out in the woods while geocaching. And it was clearly a big whip saw, but it had been bent and broken off at both ends. So I've got about two feet of it that's straight. And I thought if this worked in any way well, I might consider rehashing it, only making it two feet long. And then, then you got yourself a saw that might be useful. The only downside with that one is it is so worn out. There's really nothing left of the rakers. But Hey, anything we can give a new life to, right? Let's sharpen that. This wouldn't be any fun if I couldn't cut myself while working on it. I'm not claiming you can shave with it, but it's a whale of a lot sharper than when I started. Sharpening these things is kind of an art form. I haven't mastered it. But you see sparkle down in there and it looks wicked. We are at bedtime right now. We won't have it done today. But that is one fine looking old new saw. Ooh, I'm excited, buddy. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I can't believe we can't test it out. Well, it's not done yet. You can't saw without a handle attached. I hate school. Yeah. So are the rest of us. Hey, looks pretty cool, though. Who would have thought drilling tool steel would be a pain in the butt? After damaging some expensive industrial high-speed steel quarter-inch drills, I chucked up titanium-coated Chinesium slug there out of my bulk pack, and we burned our way through, a la AVE style. Turned it all molten metal and pushed it out the backside, and we have ourselves some holes. Perfect. I don't know that I can save that, however. Came all this way in a boat to do one thing. Even in tools, somebody's got to be cannon fodder. Am I right? I, I don't know why you'd be doing this, but if you are, the hardware you're looking for are actually called Chicago screws. This is sort of a half Chicago screw. This is just something I had and uh, a bolt that I cut down. And it's going to be just fine because remember, this tool is not actually going to work. Don't tell Shay that, but it, it, it's not going to work. Look at the size. No. <laughs> But it'll work fine for that little boy, and if for some reason it does seem like it might be functional, then uh, clearly I can, I can move on and uh, order the real stuff. But Chicago screws, that's what you're looking for. Huh? How about that? Nice and tight. It even cuts, sort of. You know, if running a chainsaw was slow and hurt your hand, look at that saw curve.
<laughs> well, again, this this was cut down from it was a fairly short one man bucking saw, firewood saw, they would have called it. Firewood saw, oh gosh, three feet long, three and a half feet long. That's how long it was originally. Single handled. That's, that's the first time she's cut wood since before I was alive. That's for sure. Oh, Shay's gonna be tickled to death. What should I do with the handle? It's always gonna have his little mark on it too. Wonder what I should do with the handle. No idea what that wood is. It. Uh, it's part of a cutting board, so my guess is it's some sort of Indonesian tropical something. It's hard. It's good and hard and holds an edge and machines well. Look at the quality of that cut. You could slap some finish on that and you would already be done. What a time saver. Oh, again, obviously, it's a silly project. Uh, What's well, going to make my little man absolutely thrilled he loves saws, and this is by far the manliest of manly hand saws. <laughs> Even if it's never going to work for him. Oh, I can see his son finding it someday and thinking, Oh my gosh, I'm going to cut down trees like laser beams. What if I now? <laughs> oh man, I'm going to go show him. This is going to be great. How come you went inside? Because that noise was just too loud. That's horrible, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. it was noise was it? Um, it was louder than you could imagine. Holy jeepers! You keep it just the way it was. Oh, wow! Nice! What do you think, bud? Yeah, that is... How did you even drill it? I didn't. I burned my way through. You burned your way through the metal. It was too tough for any drill bit I owned. Really? Well, it was too tough. It was too tough for any drill bit I was willing to wreck. So. Where did you get it? The saw. Ah, uh, that saw part was found in the woods outside of Bozeman, Montana. Oh. 